Hey guys, what's up? It's Moz here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm actually going to be showing you guys the best OBS streaming settings for streaming your content to Twitch, YouTube gaming, or really any streaming site in 2018. I made my 2018 best recording settings guide for OBS a few weeks ago and it's received a ton of support with a bunch of people asking me to make this video, so here it is. If you have any questions whatsoever, shoot me a follow on Twitter, DM me, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If this video does end up helping you out at all, please hit that like button, that's all I ask. But other than that, let's get on with the video. Alright guys, so first things first, just go ahead and open up OBS, and if you don't already have it for some reason and you're still watching this video, then I'm gonna have a link in the description below where you can go and download it. But anyways, I'm not gonna be showing you guys how to actually set up the scenes and sources because you should already know how to do that if you're looking up a streaming guide. I did go in detail about all that in my 2018 recording guide in case you guys do want to see that, but anyways, the first thing I want you guys to do is just go ahead and hit the settings button right here, and then from here, we're just gonna go to the video tab. Now, for your base resolution or your base canvas resolution, you want this to be what the source quality is going to be, and the source is essentially what you're actually going to be streaming whether that's a console like an elgato or something like that just a webcam or even your pc so let's say i'm streaming my xbox through an elgato and i play at 1080p so i would leave this first one at 1920 by 1080 and the same thing goes if i was playing my pc and i was playing it at 1080p i would do the same thing for the base canvas resolution just change it to 1080p and on the chance that you play like games at 720p or something like that then just go ahead and pick the corresponding value go ahead and copy the exact thing that you put for base canvas resolution to your output scale resolution so since it's already on 720p i'm just going to quickly change it to 1920 by 1080 and moving on from that we've got the downscale filter and I wouldn't worry too much about that I usually just end up picking one of the sharpened scaling ones either by cubic or Lanxos or however you say that doesn't really matter but moving on from that we got the FPS and that's pretty self-explanatory if you want to stream at 30 FPS then just go ahead and pick on 30 if you want to stream at 60 FPS then either pick 59 at 94 or 60 both work for 60 FPS and it doesn't really make a difference now since this is a beginner's guide I feel like I should explain that 30 FPS is easier to stream with and it will help you if you have a lower bitrate but 60 FPS will look way smoother but you'll definitely need a higher end PC to be actually be able to do that. So I'm just going to click uh, 59.94, hit apply, and then from there we can actually move on to the output tab. So once you're here, the first thing you want to do is just make sure you change your output mode from simple to advanced. You're going to see a lot more options, but trust me, this is exactly what we want. Again, we're only going to be messing with the streaming settings, so we're not going to be going to the recording tab right here, but in case you are interested in normal recording, definitely check out that other video. So one thing I really do love about OBS is that it allows users to record and stream in multiple audio tracks. And these right here, like these six like little buttons right here, these are what you call audio tracks and that's helpful when you want to like separate your audio for each audio track you have whether that's like your music your mic your gameplay discord or really anything else you have going on now although i don't really have to cover that since it doesn't have anything to do with the quality of your stream i thought i'd still give a brief description i highly recommend playing with it in your own time on a test stream or something just so you know how it works and how beneficial it can be but honestly you'll probably be fine at leaving it with one or two moving on from that we've got the encoder and you might see multiple options like i do right here but just click on x264 that's the best one most people use it i use it and i highly recommend you use it as well from there, make sure that you actually have the enforced streaming service encoder settings button checked. And then moving on from that, we do want to check rescale output. So while actually doing research for this video and coming up with a proper guide, I found a lot of popular Twitch streamers only stream in 720p. However, for YouTube streamers, it's kind of a mix. So I went and talked to a few friends of mine who actually stream on Twitch. And they told me that up until like last March, there was no point in streaming in 1080p on Twitch. And I didn't know this, but basically back then, there was literally no difference in the switch between 720p and 1080p. The reasoning behind that is because there are certain bit rates you need in order to actually keep up with resolution you're streaming at and twitch didn't allow those back then the max bit on twitch used to be i believe 3500 but since then they've upped it to like 6000 which is great and allows you to stream in true 1080p if you'd like i know it might be saying a lot of random stuff for some of you guys and some of you guys might not understand what i'm saying but to summarize it before if you streamed in 1080p on twitch you weren't truly producing real 1080p content so even though 1080p is allowed now that's why most streamers just stuck with 720p as it looks near identical and it has a lower toll on your pc i know i just talked about twitch for so long but what i'm about to say it kind of applies to just whatever platform you're streaming on but i'm just gonna go ahead and change my rescale output to 1280 by 720 it's just gonna be the first option right under the 1920 by 1080 one and i highly recommend that you guys all do the same because that's what most people do you can literally go to almost any twitch streamer you're only gonna find a few who are actually streaming in 1080p at 60 fps but most of them are streaming at 720p at 60 fps but on the chance that you do want to try pushing 1080p then by all means go for it also one thing i do want to mention is make sure you change your rate control from whatever it's on to cbr i believe it is the default but just make sure that you're already there but anyways if you do try pushing 1080p i highly recommend and changing your bitrate to somewhere between 4500 and 6000 just start at the bottom and slowly work your way up until you find what works best for you but trust me there's a pretty good chance 1080p will cause your stream to drop a ton of frames if you don't already have a really nice pc and a fantastic upload speed but before you 
you even finalize doing 1080p? Just continue watching the video because in a couple more minutes I'm going to be expanding bitrate in more detail and I think you guys should stick around for that. But really, my take on it is that 720p will still be providing you with a crispy looking stream, won't cause your PC to slow down, it's going to be a great experience for viewers, and as long as you have a decent internet connection, you should be able to play and stream without any random pink spikes, which is exactly what you want. And trust me, the majority of streamers wouldn't do it to 720p if there was that big of a difference between 1080p and 720p. So I'm just going to quickly skip over the bitrate and we'll come back to that in a second. Anyways, I don't really know anyone who uses a custom buffer size, so I always leave that unchecked. But for a keyframe interval, you always want to change this to 2 seconds. I'm pretty sure that's what most streaming platforms actually ask you to do too, so just do that to be safe. But anyways, moving on from that, we've got the CPU preset. And this part is actually important as it allows you to improve your video quality even more than the bitrate does, especially if you're playing a game with a lot of animation like Falling Rain, Lightning, and things you might find in games like Fortnite, Minecraft, Overwatch, etc. So this step actually depends on how good of a PC you actually have, and most of the time you'll end up experimenting with different settings to find the sweet spot. If you don't know what to use, then just go ahead and start with the default, which I believe is very fast and move your way closer to the slower side but each time you bump it up do a test stream and play something just to make sure that your pc can handle it but a quick summary of all these is that if you have a super nice pc you'll want to bump it up closer to the slower side and i say that because the slower it is the more time it actually has to process all the visuals that you're actually trying to stream I think the lowest you'd ever want to go would be very fast, I don't think you should ever go to ultra fast or super fast because that's going to result in a really pixelated stream, which I don't think anyone would want to watch and I'm pretty sure you don't even want to be streaming that if you're looking for the best OBS streaming settings. I think really anywhere between very fast and fast is usually going to result in a nice quality stream so I usually just pick the middle which is faster. But really just like I said before it's just going to depend on how good of a PC you actually have. Moving on from that we've got the profile and for that I usually just go with main and then for my tune I just leave that at none. Also I don't do anything with the X265 for options I just leave that empty and that's what most people do too so from there just go ahead and click on apply and you should be good to go. Anyways let's quickly move back to the bitrate because that's something I want to cover and I feel like I haven't talked much about that for 720p streams. I recommend having a bitrate somewhere between 2000 and 3500 and do the same thing just start from the bottom and slowly work your way up by doing test streams until you find what works best for you. Even though Twitch does allow you to stream at 6000 max now you still have to think about your viewers and not everyone is able to watch streams without buffering at that high of a bitrate. So that's why I even say doing 1080p streams might be nice but since you'll need a higher bitrate to actually do that there's a pretty good chance that most of your viewers won't even be able to watch it. I personally think 720p at 60fps with a bitrate in the range of 2000 to 3500 will be plenty in my opinion. I usually just change my bitrate to 3000. To see what bitrate is actually right for you, head over to speedtest.net and just click the big circle that says go on it and I'm going to have a little chart on the screen for you guys to actually compare your upload speed and that'll be what I think your bitrate should be. You want to keep in mind that you're sharing these speeds with the rest of your house so unless you live alone definitely keep in mind that someone might be watching Netflix downstairs or someone might be doing a big download in a different room or something like that. So if you're streaming at the same time as someone else is doing something like that, then you're probably going to cause your whole house to lag if your speeds aren't that good. So anyways, again, just click on apply and you should be good to go from there. For the recording settings, just like I said before, if you do want to see what I do for that to get the best quality possible, just check out the link in the description below. It's a detailed guide on how to get 1080p footage in 60fps, so it's totally up to you, but I thought I might as well mention that once more. Anyways, moving on from that, we've got the audio tab. And I usually just tend to leave the track that I'm streaming on at either 160 or 192, it really doesn't matter. But if I'm recording, then I usually just bump everything else up to 320, so I'll change this to 320. All the rest, and even the first one, I just change everything to 320 if I'm recording on OBS. But if I'm just streaming, I just use whichever ones I'm using at 160 or 192. I really don't think it makes that big of a difference. Lastly, hit apply, and you should be good to go from there too. Now, the next part that I'm about to mention is something that you guys should have already set up yourselves, but I might as well just cover it in the video. But that's actually going to be the streaming tab and this is essentially where you set up whatever stream service that you're going to use whether that's like twitch mixer youtube twitter or really anything you'll also want to find your stream key which is the thing right here in a bunch of like black circles and to find your own specific stream key for whatever provider you use just do a google search of stream key space the provider you're using an example of this could be a google search of stream key space twitch once you find it just copy and paste it into this text box right here from there just go ahead and pick on the server that's closest to you you can do auto which is recommended i know that chicago is pretty close so i just left it there it doesn't really matter what you do to be honest just pick whatever is closest to you to get the highest quality st stream possible also one last thing i do want to mention is don't show your stream key to anyone else because that's all they need to actually stream on your account without even having to sign in with your password but anyways from there you can click on apply click on okay set up your scenes and sources and all that stuff hit the start streaming button and you should be good to go anyways guys i really hope you did enjoy the video if you did be sure to hit that like button share this video with your friends and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already because i'm on my way to 100,000 subscribers and all help is appreciated but other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.